You're listening to the Geekly Chronicles, Series 4, up to Episode 9. Thanks for listening back to the Geekly Chronicles. This show was recorded on the 29th of July, 2016. This version of the show isn't quite the same as the one that went out live, as we've had to edit out all of the songs. It's nothing personal. We're just big fans of making sure artists get paid for the great things they create. If you want to listen back to the show in its full musical glory, wow. head over to our Mixcloud channel, where you'll find every episode of the Geekly Chronicles as it was meant to be heard. Ooh. Ooh. That's mixcloud.com forward slash G-K-L-Y-C-O. Thanks again for listening. Hello. 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 Hello, you. Hiya. Hello. And in the week that scientists have made a breakthrough in the treatment of motor neurone disease, also known as ALS, all because of the funding that they received through the Ice Bucket Challenge. In the week where, I'm afraid, I tried to play some sad piano music. Um, <laughs> in a week where the, fir- the last ever VCR was made, that threw me off. The sad piano just didn't, didn't kick in. Ugh. Hashtag sad piano. Hashtag sad yeah. piano. What else happened? Well, a comedian uh, left fake coupons around a supermarket in the US offering rewards like a free hug and a piggyback around the car park. Nice. Oh. Nice. Uh, and... <laughs> the sad <laughs> the piano, piano randomly piano. just appeared in the corner. Oh. Uh, fantastic. In the week, also in the week, that a man used a £150,000 Lamborghini to tow a trailer full of goats. Oh. Goats. Yeah, oh, goats. He did. Goats. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, uh, <laughs> me again. Uh, the bike bus uh, it was launched in Boston. It's a bus with exercise bikes instead of seats. Now, I don't know if that means the exercise bikes power the bus, and that's also green energy, but pretty cool for people to get fit as they... as they Commute, I guess. Commute, yeah. Mm. You Although, c- of course, you could cycle to your destination, but I imagine this yeah. is faster. Possibly. So, I don't know. Depends. It's it because if you get stuck in traffic in a bus, you're not really going anywhere. But if you're on a bike, you can sort of weave in and out. How true. Mm. And also this week, it's been revealed that Pokemon Go is already influencing baby names. Wow! Well, of course it is. Of course. What, but so like how a bit of babies being called Valor and Mystique, <laughs> or or are they being called like Vaporeon? I think uh, P- Pikachu. Evie was mentioned. Evie? Yeah. That I is suppose. a beautiful name. Mm. That does actually work as a name yes, in its own right as well. So that's pretty cool. That's a human name that is not unheard of. Yeah. Uh, but in all of those weeks, it's the Geekly Chronicles. It is. Hello. Episode nine. I know. I'm Can in the studio this it? time. You are. It's quite, quite nice to not be in the scary chair. Yeah. Well, it's quite nice to not be in the scary country. Mm. Well, I mean, I mean I'm this a, one is, yeah, it's, is sometimes it's, a bit. But it's the, nice, nice to not haunted. have Trump on your doorstep. Uh, although I did yes. make a very Trumpy noise earlier. We were recording some stuff for the show and I went with my mouth. Ooh. That was an actual noise I made Ooh. that I saved from the editing. Legitimately. Uh. Yeah. So that's so, going to be my, my noise for Eddie. If I want to get the conversation moved on tonight, I'll just play that. Excellent. And I would, I would like to apologise right now at the start of the show to anyone in UK time who is currently having their dinner. Ah, uh, yeah. So. I forgot about that. Or anyone anywhere that's having their dinner. Well, yeah. that's very true. Um, or any meal of any form that you have now been put <laughs> off thoroughly. Uh, but coming up later, I love this button. <laughs> coming up later in the show, moving swiftly on from the Trumpy button, uh, we've got all your favourite features. We've got Gamer Geeks, Tumble Fumble, bit of Would You Fund It going on. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about this week's Would You Fund It. We're also going to be talking about the uh, the sad demise of the VCR. We are. And uh, and plenty of other things, including the tumble fumble. As always. Yeah. yeah. What else? It's there, fumbling and tumbling. Uh, we have a fantastic guest, which is kind of inspiring the tumble fumble. We do. I'm week. excited to have Nora Reed on the show. They do seem pretty awesome. Yes. Um, they have created all, all kinds of Twitter bots, of which we are a fan yeah. here in the studio. Yeah, more on them later, and more from them later. Indeed. Um, and all of our usual sort of banter, plus, you know, news about what happens next series and uh, yeah. and what you might be able to catch in between. This is the ninth episode, uh, so, it's you know, over. next week will be the last, uh, next week, next show in two weeks' yeah. time will be the last one of the series, which uh, is almost, almost disbelief. Yeah. Mm. Almost, but not quite. 
I can't believe it's not geekly. I know. But, you know, these things happen. We take a little break from the show to... Uh, to Keep it fresh. Keep it fresh to, to get new ideas. And really, the important thing is that we go our own way. I mean, I say we'd go our own way, but really, we'd we'd just hang out and yeah, we'd we'd pretty much just come here and think about the show, talk just about not the show, and yeah, we do uh, we do spend a lot of time on this uh, this thing, don't we? We do. We keep these wheels a turning. Mm-hmm. Keep these ideas are funding yeah if you, if I you was, like i was gonna segue. say i was gonna say keep these tumbles fumbling but then i realized that wasn't first it's would you fund it tis well yeah. i was excited <laughs> i don't know who else is <laughs> well, would you fund it yep. yeah it's 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 it, happening again it yeah kind of, <laughs> it kind of concludes the competition as well yeah so we each sort of have taken our turns to pitch you the listeners ideas and have you vote on whether or not you think kick a starter style they would be funded and uh i have had three and Catherine has had three and chris has had two so this is chris's third one this week and we'll see i mean at the moment we're all equal i've had two funded you've had two funded you've had two funded Mm -hmm. so we'll see this week who the winner is and the winner gets to decide on what next week's would you fund it would be Mm mm-hmm very exciting. Although uh, it occurs to me that since we're all on level pegging, if I'm not the winner this week, we're going to have to do some kind of fancy maths to work out who gets the uh, we can we can do maths the yeah. victory. But we'll Maybe. figure it out. No, Chris, why don't you tell us about your idea this week? So, as we were discussing on the last show a couple of weeks ago, recently in the UK we got a new prime minister, and Theresa May uh, is is now in charge. She moved into Ten Downing Street, and of course that meant that David Cameron had to vacate. The property. But, well, that tends to happen, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 One, one PM moves out, the next one moves in. But I wanted to know what it would be like if David Cameron, after having had his time in number 10, didn't really have anywhere else to go and just sort of had to move back in with his parents. Welcome to the first episode of At Home with the Camerons. I was a bit worried after I left Downing Street that I had nowhere to go. We sold all our other houses, thinking I'd be there forever. A bit silly, really. Anyway, Sam and the kids are off with Sam's mum while I work things out, and here I am, back in the old family home. Life isn't always easy for David, who's got to learn that he's not in charge of everything anymore. How many times I'm not doing your laundry for you? But mother, I've got to look important today. I used to have people for this. Or maybe it's about time you got off your backside and did something for yourself. It's the 5th of September. David, still missing his high-flying position in government, is getting ready for his first day back in Parliament. Now, I've packed you a lunch, so don't forget to eat it, will you? Mother, I can't be eating cucumber sandwiches on the back bench. Don't be silly. Now you're not up at the dispatch box, you can have a proper meal. David was once one of the most important men in Britain. Today... He's carving a pumpkin. Hmm. Just one more tooth, and then we have a thatch lantern ready to go. With this, I'll be able to light the way for trick-or-treaters to join the big society. Looks more like Michael Gove than Margaret Thatcher to me. Really? I was going for something austere and reverent. Oh, it seems a bit more Mr Bean goes to Parliament. With nothing to watch on television other than repeats of Doctor Who, old episodes are pointless, and yet another showing of love actually, David and his mum go to a bonfire party. This traditional British ritual celebrates something to do with Parliament. Now this has made David feel a wee bit nostalgic. I know that Guy Fawkes was trying to blow up Parliament, but at least he was remembered. What will my legacy be? Calm down and eat your toffee apple. Let's go and get a cup of tea. The queue isn't too long. The queue would be even shorter if we privatised this. Get a firm in, do away with these scouts. It's Christmas morning. David has offered to provide Christmas dinner for all his family. What they don't know is that he's subcontracted his family Christmas dinner to controversial catering firm Sedexo. David William Donald Cameron. What are all these people in hairnets doing in my kitchen? I said I'd take care of it, Mother. And I did. You privatised our Christmas dinner. Rather than going to Waitrose, you've given us soggy outsourced sprouts and a limp parsnip. Oh dear. Next week we'll be joining George Osborne as he goes to live with his Uncle Ozzy and Aunt Sharon. And we'll catch back up with David and see how he handles a New Year's celebration with his old pal Jeremy and a crowd of rowdy junior doctors. (laughs) 
I'd watch it. Yep. Yeah. I'd, I'd watch it. Yeah. So that's that's what I imagine that would be like. Uh, but I can see this being quite a nice documentary series. Yeah. Uh, so you get a chance to vote, you, the listeners, on you whether do. you would fund this idea or not. So if you head to gkly.co forward slash fund it. Well remembered. Yep. <laughs> then uh, you can you can vote in there and, and let us know what you think. Alternatively, if you head to Twitter, our Twitter account is GKLYCO. There's a poll there. You can use the Twitter poll. All the results will be pulled together towards the end of the show, and we'll see whether Chris is the victor in uh, in this series of Would You Fund It? Or, uh, or whether we all have to pull together and uh, work out who has won. Yes. Mm-hmm. Go for a, a tie break. I like that though. I was I'm actually quite um I think that'd make quite a nice comedy series. Yeah. I would enjoy watching that. Yeah, I'd I'd go for it. Although the early indication from the audience is not looking entirely positive. But well, uh, we'll, we'll see later. We'll wait and see how that, we'll wait how and that see. comes yeah. out. Uh, but before we get into to any more uh chat, we've got loads we can talk about uh we do. this week. A lot has happened. Uh let's have a request. This is a request for Rachel in the chat room. Uh, the the request robot thought about the karaoke version, but I'm not really I don't really know this song well enough to no. sing along to it. So let's let's do the full version, shall we? Yeah. Uh, this one's for Rachel. I the VCR. See, I see your segue now. Well, no, it, it's it genuinely. I mean, this song came out uh, came out in that sort of time, and and you know the VCR that was invented in the in the seventies, nineteen seventy three, I believe. Um, the VHS configuration debuted in nineteen seventy seven. Oh, there we go. Well, that, I, yeah, I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense. You know, 70s, a lot of promise. Um, we were suddenly able to tape stuff off the telly mm-hmm. and watch mm-hmm. pre-recorded content, which was the important thing, of course. Um, you know, most of the time when it started out, it was content that was available to watch at home. Then they added the record functionality in there. And it, it just became huge. Taping stuff off the telly was just a thing that we did when we were younger. It's just a thing that... On-demand TV didn't exist. That was the way you watched things back. Mm. No, I remember my, my uncle had um, like the, the wardrobe, sort of built-in wardrobe in, in the bedroom. Um, it was just lined with these shelves, which had all these, um, you know, like the scotch tapes yeah, on. Yeah. And each one would have maybe, you know, two or three movies on it that he'd recorded off the TV. And every time wow. you put and them in, they went, I'm a tape lassie. Mm. Scotch tapes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. And uh, so then there was the list. So each one was numbered. Uh, and then there was an, uh, then there was a list of films and which number tape they were on. Oh, wow, that's wow. clever. And... Um, yeah, so just kind of like popping the tab on the tape so that it couldn't be recorded over and things mm-hmm. like that. I mean, it's it's amazing though because even even back in 1978 when the the VHS format first came on the market and um, you know people were were first able to hit the record button on those machines for the first time, it was a key selling point. I mean, I've got this yeah. great advert from 1978. Give this a listen. Marty, shh, you'll scare the fish. But we're missing the big football Relax. game. Relax, my VHS home video recorder is taping it right now. Terrific. Watch. Terrific. But suppose it's over three hours. Relax. Panasonic VHS tapes up to four hours of sports, movies, specials on one cassette. Wow. This VHS is for me. You caught the whole game. Best catch of the day. Yeah. VHS, the four-hour system from Panasonic and other leading companies. So you could record four hours of content. Four wow. whole hours. Yeah. And yet, this amazing technology that has been superseded, obviously, by not only things like DVD, which, you know, people didn't really have DVD recorders, weren't really mainstream, but... Mm. No, I do remember owning one at one point. Oh, really? I didn't, but... Yeah, the DVD-R. Uh, I mean, I have one on my computer, but, you know, the rise of things like the internet has meant that people don't buy even DVDs or Blu-rays as much. But then no, videos now... being superseded by technology, it means that sadly... Yeah, I mean, I only buy things on DVD now if I can't find anywhere to stream it from. Yeah. yeah. And all of that means that sadly the uh, the VCR is coming to, a, coming to a sad, sad end this week. In fact... <laughs> This week, in Japan, the very last VCR is being made. Oh. As we speak, yeah. as we broadcast, 
some point this week. I'd be interested be to it. know how many of our listeners still have a VCR. Oh, I still have a VCR. I do too, yeah. Yeah, I've got a couple of them. I don't actually have it connected up right now, but I've got it. Hmm. I think my mum still has one somewhere. I remember the days. Just isn't plugged into anything. The days of the VCR. When I would get home from school and pop in a tape. <laughs> I'd watch Red Dwarf or... Red Dwarf. DCR. Maybe a bit of the tribe or, or something else that I really got into and, and really wanted to watch more of. I had virtually all of Star Trek on VHS. I remember watching Star Trek on VHS. Two episodes per tape. I would buy wow. Star Trek VHSs from the local supermarket. Me too. I would watch them. The new ones came out on a Monday. I would watch them and sit and eat sandwiches watch my VCRs. You know what, I... It was a, it was a time in life that <laughs> really I remember so fondly. And I'd be lost, so lost, without the VCR. You know what, I miss? Video Plus. Oh, Video Plus was, was a great, great. thing. Being Tapping able to go through the radio the, times yeah. and then type in the code. I wonder if other would... countries had similar things. Yeah. I'm sure they did. I think they had it in America under a different name. Um, but, yeah, it's being able to type in a code and then it knows what channel to be on and when to record it and everything. And inevitably, the program you want would overrun slightly and the Video Plus would just cut it off. So you'd miss the last five minutes of intense drama in whatever you were watching. But, yeah, it was it was great. Be kind, rewind, those phrases that we will miss. I love you, VHS, VCR. You'll always have a place in my heart. I had a really old VCR um, at one point, and when I rewound, it made such a distinctive noise, we called it the hamster wheel. Um, <laughs> so squeaky. I used to have one that was top load. I had lots that were push load. I had some that had audio out. I had one that even had audio in. It was bizarre. I know. Um, I, I know had someone. one that, that the flappy bit was broken off. You know where oh, you push no. the tape in, so yeah, all the dust could get in there. I know and you someone had to keep that... blowing in there to yeah. try and let the yeah. dust out. I know someone oh. that had a top loading one that uh, they had to. They always had a top loading one and a front loading one because they discovered that the top-loading one would eat certain tapes. Ah. <laughs> Which was quite uh, Distressing, quite I imagine. Distressing, and you yes. realised that you'd watched something so much that the tape had worn down, and so when you were watching it back, it was just worse quality every time. Yeah. yeah. I had that sometimes. Yeah, sometimes I've got a few uh, VHS tapes that I bought second-hand, and you can tell where somebody mm. else has perhaps paused on a significant scene. Everything goes a bit. It's a funny. Bit there's, there's one episode of Red Dwarf in series four that I still, to this day, if I watch it back on a streaming service, I know exactly where the tape had a blip, and I lost <laughs> about three seconds. Because I'm always amazed that it doesn't just jump. Because I'd watched it so many times from that tape. Oh, do you remember the head cleaning tape as well? Yeah. Oh yes. The always felt so official if you put the head cleaning tape mm. in, like yeah. it was some ritual big of... spring cleaning ritual. <laughs> yes. Oh, Fantastic. VCR. We yeah. will miss you. We will. We will miss you. The world will miss you. Yeah. It will. But I I will always maintain my VCR. Oh, and do you remember when Channel 5 became a thing and somebody had to come around and retune all the VCRs? Uh. Yes. <laughs> yes, in the UK when they launched the fifth terrestrial channel, that was a big deal. And you couldn't get it everywhere. Sometimes you had to put a little receiver on the end, a little yeah. kind of box on the end to stop the interference that you could get it. Yeah, we have one of those. Wow. Well. End of an era. End of it an is. era. It is. An era of an ender. CWSLTD in the chat room. So it's a concise name. Uh, it says, so sad. It is. It is sad, indeed. I am... Uh, I'm a little bit, like... I'm almost feeling like I need to buy one of these final VCRs just so that I've got one like an insurance policy. Yeah. Because what if mine claps out and then I can't get a new one? Yeah, yeah, I think the instructions and the remote might all be in Japanese, but as long as you can read the play button, 
put stuff in, yeah. it's fine. It's generally just sort of a triangle, so we, we should be all right. Yeah. A moment, <sighs> for, a moment VCR. for VCR. <laughs> anyway. <Yes>. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> moving on from that. Well, indeed. What else has been going on this week? All kinds of things have been going on this week. Um, and really, really good news that... The uh, that scientists have made a breakthrough in the treatment of motor neurone disease because of the ice bucket challenge. Uh, was it was it found by throwing buckets of ice water over people's heads, or was it the money it that was, was raised? Not. It was the money that was raised. Um, but they they raised an incredible amount of money from everyone taking part in the ice bucket challenge and donating and everything. Uh, and the ALS Association says that. Because of all of these donations, they were able to afford the research that has now found some more information and potentially is moving towards a cure. That's amazing. Mm, it really is. That is really great. I, it's fantastic that all of the, you know, when everyone a couple of years ago was saying, oh, what's the, or a year ago, whenever it was, oh, you know, is this really going to do anything? People put ice over the reds. Yeah. <laughs> all in that <laughs> voice as well. <laughs> that's um, the voice that internet criticism sounds like. Yeah, a bit like the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Um, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> any excuse to press I've that button. I've uh, got the word slacktivism here. Slacktivism. Yes. I suppose it's like lazy activism. Mm. Yeah, but, it's, but, but if it's it worked, works. if it's done something, then... And it has. Yeah, exactly. It says that the, the gene that they word. have discovered um, is only associated with 3% of, of cases, but it is present in pretty much every form of the disease. So if they're able to figure out how it affects people, then they're going to make a significant breakthrough. That's incredible. That is really, really cool. It really is. So well done, everyone that tipped ice over themselves and donated and did all of those things. <laughs> Go you. Go science. If you were cold and wet, thank you. Indeed. Also this week, Pokemon Go has been influencing baby names, you said. Yes, I did say that, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> um, How? Yeah, I, I, well, I suppose we talked about Pokemon Go quite a bit last week as well. Not last week, last show. Um, and I've been playing it obsessively since then. Yes. Um, although a little bit, it's, yeah. it's really not been around very long. And for us to already know that it's uh, affecting baby names, I think is quite amazing. Um, I've got here that... Um, Rosalia has risen 5,859 spots over the last year. Onyx is up 2,184 spots and Eevee jumped up 1,377 spots. Onyx. People are actually calling their children Onyx. Yep. I mean, to be fair. After the giant stony Pokemon. Mm. To be fair, that is a word that exists outside of Pokemon. Yes, but... But the... also... <laughs> yeah. I like Eevee. I think Eevee's a very pretty name. Yeah. Yeah. I like that too. know a few people that are called Eevee, actually. Not Pokemon related, not spelled the same way, but it is, it's not an uncommon human name. Well, the interesting well as thing as well is that name. Eevee has a lot of potential evolutions. This is true. You say this is true like you know what I'm talking about. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, this is a report from Baby Center. I don't really know anything about Baby Center, but it's their report. Um, it also notes that Pokemon like, Pokemon like Starmie, Ivysaur and Shaman... Uh, maybe influencing baby name trends as Star has risen also um, and Ivy is up and wow. Shay has also jumped. Wow. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Might just be names inspired by Pokemon. That's mm. pretty cool. Pokemon revival. Pokemon is is tackling and taking over the world. Yeah, got to give birth to them all. <laughs> well, I was seeing on the news earlier that the person that sung the original Pokemon theme tune um for the for the US series has been rediscovered and has gone in and done a live studio version of the Pokemon theme song, which is Fantastic. great. But it was a really sad story because he didn't when it, nobody had any idea it was going to be popular when he recorded it, so he did it for a one off payment. Oh no. And of course the royalties on that song now, he would be absolutely minted, but Yeah. <sighs> sadly has nothing but pride. Oh well. Such a shame. shame cool indeed. though. Yeah. Cool though. It's, it's a nice claim to fame. Yeah. No, I mean, I'd love to be able to say that I did that. I didn't, but, you know, I'd have signed a better royalties contract, yes. I guess. So. Yes, definitely. Ah, oh, but that's a shame. Um, mm. So coming up, uh, we've got Game of Geeks a little earlier this week. So we've, we've got some exciting 
uh, tumble fumble stuff that is related to our guest. <gasps> How exciting. Uh, we'll be talking to Nora again. Uh, well, we'll be talking to Nora again. We'll be talking to Nora a little bit later <laughs> um, after Game of Geeks. So, uh, you know, stick around for that. But uh, really to uh, to celebrate the the demise or to commiserate the demise of the VCR. Um, <laughs> <laughs> every time. Every time. You are listening to the Geekly Chronicles. Game of Geeks. Now for this week's Game of Geeks. Game Press of all the geeks. buttons. <laughs> all the game, all the game, all the geek. That's us. Yeah. Ah, so now it's time for Game of Geeks. It is. It is. Uh, game of Geeks again. I'm back in the normal format. It is indeed. Yes. The weekly, uh, the weekly, the every show when you pit uh, Chris and I get to say, why do I say weekly? We're not on weekly. We are not. No. Fortnightly. The fortnightly. We're geekly, not weekly. <laughs> ah, ah, I see what you did there. Uh-huh. Uh, where Chris and I are pitted against each other by Catherine, who asks us some pretty intense questioning. I suppose really we should be called the Gort Nightly Chronicles. The Gort Nightly Chronicles. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. anyway. No. Right. So, uh, so yes, um, at, at the moment I think Chris is mainly playing to keep pride intact, yes. as we are currently five shows okay, to do so in, in Kevin's <laughs> favour. Ooh, exciting. <laughs> yeah, I worked out that if I win the next two shows then my defeat will not be as humiliating. Mm. Okay, well, give it a go then. Give it a go. Yeah, so mainly that. Um, obviously, we will need some buzzers. Yeah. Uh, so this week, Kez goes... Yes, we've got our video! Ah, <laughs> from the young ones. Classic. And Chris goes... Ah, uh, VCR from the Buggles. Yes. Indeed. Because okay. video was supposed to have killed the radio still. And yet we're still here. Yes. Mm-hmm. But yeah, video is no, not. I, I think star might be on that. <laughs> well, and I think video in a general, it killed, killed the VCR. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, the, the VCR, yeah. but Radio like, outlasted the video star. Not really, because, you know, there are still video stars on YouTube. Oh, yeah. They'll be going a lot longer. Mm. That's true. Anyway. But you can still buy radios, and you can no longer buy VCRs. That is true. So. True. Indeed. But anyway. Anyway. <laughs> So Game of Geeks is back, and I, again, have all the normal varieties of questions. Excellent. With three clues to each thing. Okay. But obviously you might not need three clues. Okay. If you get it on the first clue, three points. Second clue, two points. Third clue, one point. My finger is on my buzzer. Excellent. As is mine. And the buzzers are active, which is is also good. (laughs) So, uh, okay. Your first thing uh, is a website. Okay. 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 Clue number one. In mid-2007, this site struck a deal with Channel 4 to sponsor its drama output. Ooh. Were you watching anything dramatic on Channel 4 in 2007? I probably no. was, but... <laughs> I probably wasn't. Drama... No. Drama on 4, sponsored by... No. Your mum. <laughs> I... I don't think she did. <laughs> do, we, do, we need, do we need a second clue, perhaps? Yes, please. We, we might. Okay, so clue number two for two points. Uh, a new advertising campaign in 2009 saw unique monthly visitors to the site jump from just over 200,000 to 1.1 million. Hmm. Yes, we've got our video! It wasn't yes. Go Compare, was it? No. Okay. <laughs> Actually, we've already used that on the series. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. compare. Right. <laughs> <laughs> for, for one point, I think we need the final clue. Please. For this is one a tough point. One. This site has a spoof companion web. Yes, we've got a uh, Compare the market.com. <laughs> yes. Right. No, of a spoof course. companion website designed to help you compare small carnivorans belonging to the mongoose family. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Compare the meerkats. Yes. 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 All right, that's okay. one point. To I was using that's it just the other day. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes Which, yes. as you know, is worth bearing in mind when I'm making the questions for Game of Thrones. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> 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 yeah, back to the usual, uh, usual approach Level to questioning. Prep. Yes. Okay. Next. The next thingamajig is a TV show. Okay. Exciting. So get your TV show hats on. Clue number one. Okay. Uh, this British sitcom first aired in September 2000. It was primarily filmed at uh, Teddington Studios with uh, exteriors filmed in an on location in Lee Street in Bloomsbury, London. Oh, Teddington. What was filmed there? Is that not where the World of Adventures is? That's Chessington. Chessington. Okay, close then. No, I've got nothing. 
Next clue, I think. That was kind of obscure. Okay, clue number two. This British sitcom, again, it's, it's a still British a British sitcom. sitcom. Yeah. Good, it hasn't changed. Uh, gave us the question. quote: "I'm never going outside again unless I need some place to throw up." Oh, I recognise the quote. But Perhaps it would be better if I could do it in an Irish accent, but I can't. No, I'm still lost no. here. Wow, yeah. lost at sea. Okay, I know. clue three for one really point. Really hard questions this week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> for one point, the three main characters have the surnames Black, Bianco, and Cats and Jammer. Uh. Yes, we've got our video! Black's books. Black books, yes. Hey, there we go. So I've got two points. It's not yeah, bad. two whole points. Of course. Cares. Yes. Black books. Okay. Are you ready for the third thing? The third thing. The third thing. Yeah, you're Which just is... you're making this hard to make up for last week, yeah, aren't yeah. you? Where I gave you tough questions. Mm. Uh huh. <laughs> right. It's okay. The revenge. The re- yeah, game of revenge. Geeks. The revenge, revenge is a dish best served quizzically. Mm. Okay. So next up, we have a game. Okay. All right. I will be bad at this. I can go. Yes, we've got our video. Is it game of geeks? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That would be awesome. I'm doing that next week. <laughs> I've, right. Okay. Clue number one. The idea for this game was conceived in 2014 and presented as an April Fool's Day collaboration with Google. Mm. Um, I, uh, no. No. No idea. No. Okay. Clue number two for two points. From September 2016, uh, this game is set to be capable of incorporating gameplay elements uh, from a special wearable device. Chris. You know that thing where the questions are not not that difficult to work out based on current life events? It's super relevant to the people around the table. Yeah. Is this game, by any chance, Pokemon Go? Yes, it is. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good to Making know. things level with both Chris wow, and Wow, that, that on almost two points. never happens. Mm-hmm. Nice almost and levelly. never happens. Levelly. Are you ready for another Lovely. thing? Yes, please. Next up, we have a film. A film. Okay. A film. Okay. Right. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's hear it. Okay, production of this film was temporarily shut down due to, due to um, when fire destroyed several sound stages at Paramount Studios. Yes, we've got our video! Was it... Um, Star Wars The Force Awakens. No. I'm sure there was a fire involved in that one. She could like the Millennium Falcon caught fire or something. Never mind. Anyway, it's not that one. Fine. Well, their health and safety record wasn't tremendous. But, okay. Um, no, it wasn't. No. As I have discovered, they got in a lot of trouble. Right. Clue number two for two points. Uh, this is the third film in a yes, series. Yes, we've got our video! Damn. Is it Star Trek Beyond. No. Ah! Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> we went to see it this week. It was the third <laughs> one of the rebooted Star <laughs> Trek films. Oh, I thought this would fool you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time you have ever done a devious Game of Geeks question. I'm quite impressed. Yeah, this is not going well for me. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so, the what third film in a what series, Kirsty Alley's character from the second it's installment. The tumble fumble. <laughs> That's Sorry. not the button. Yeah. Sorry, it's I It's really not the tumble fumble. I, I brushed the iPad. Okay. <laughs> so, clue number two again. The third film in a series, Kirsty Alley's character from the second instalment was replaced by Robin Curtis. Hmm. No. No, I haven't got that. No. No, no. idea. No. Clue okay, number clue three. number three. I got a feeling. <laughs> okay. Uh, this was Leonard Nimoy's first directorial feature. Hmm. Ah. Uh, uh. What did he direct? Think of something quite obvious. <laughs> what might Leonard Nimoy have directed? Well, he might have directed Star Trek. But I've said the. What? Yes, we've got our video. Was it Star Trek Into Darkness? No. Was it? Another Star Trek film. <laughs> it was another Star Trek film. <laughs> was it? Who's going to go through yes, them? We've <laughs> got our video! Well, I don't know was any it of them. Star Trek. So. No. 
I don't know any of the Star Trek films, so. What year okay. was it? What year did it come out? Uh, 1984. Oh, why did I not listen to that bit of the clue? <laughs> because I didn't put that in a clue. Oh, because right, I thought okay. that would then not fool you into thinking uh, okay. it was the new Star uh, Trek. Which one came out in 1984? Yes, we've got your video! Star Trek The Undiscovered Country. No. Oh. <laughs> I feel like okay, there should this, be a certain amount getting, of mercy. It's getting boring. Okay, right. All the Star Trek. The fact films. that it's it's still drawing. Star then. Trek Five. No, that is the undiscovered country. Star no, Trek. That's Star Trek Six. Star Trek Five: The Search for Spock. Star Trek Five: The Third in the series, <laughs> as mentioned earlier. Oh. Next question. Star I Trek Three: question. The Search for Spock. Yeah, but I've already written you off. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. Like Twelve guesses is enough. Um, <laughs> Okay, the close. decider. So one of you has to get this. Okay. Is an event because I don't have any more clues. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Right. So yes, we've got your video! Your birthday. No. Oh. <laughs> I'm Brownie using points. that next week as well. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. You're just trying to, to butter up the quiz master. <laughs> yep. Is that the. I see how it is. In its current format, this event has always been commercialised. Some of its first sponsors included Kodak, Oxo, and Coca-Cola. Yes, we've got our video! Christmas. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, Christmas, sponsored no. by Kodak. Well, Chris, that would make sense. Santa's only green because of Coca-Cola, so it's... Santa's red, red. because Sorry. of Coca-Cola. Santa, Santa used was to be green. green. There we go. That's what what colour is Coca-Cola, other than brown? Red. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Right. right. Clue number two for two points. World Wars led to the cancellation of this event. Yes, in... we've got our video! The Olympics. Yes. Wee! Oh, come <laughs> on. Two points for cares, meaning... You've got to be quicker on the buzzer. Another win. What else was cancelled during the war except for fun? Uh, probably quite a lot of things, I imagine. Yeah, the Olympics was the big event. Wow. The big event. The big event. <laughs> the big event. So does that mean I did it again? Yes, it means you did it again. This week's winner is... Yay! Uh-huh. In your face, in your face, actually. That's mainly it's not... because we're getting the Olympics, you know, next week. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, I should have thought not, about that. It's not so in your face because I did pretty badly, but yes, you just did, you did very slightly. And you were equal with me right up until the end. Yes. So that was a good, good game. Good game. I didn't utterly destroy you this time. You have gone mean with these questions. <laughs> I like this. Mean. I like this new mean just questioning. Just mean. How, how mean? Very mean. <laughs> Scatter mean in the chat room. Yeah. Yes, we've got a video. <laughs> we do, we do indeed. <laughs> I'm trying to press my buzzer again. Hang on. Yeah. Oh. Yes, we've got a video. We, we do. might need to keep that on the on the jingle board. Uh -huh. <laughs> might leave yeah. it there, but I also quite like a bit of buggles. Mm. A bit of buggles. Who doesn't like a bit of buggles? Who doesn't really like? I'm asking. I, who I, doesn't I, like I a bit of know. buggles? I, I'm good with it. I, I have no objections personally. Fine. All right then. Well. Well, indeed. Uh, in about five minutes' time, we'll be talking to our guest of the evening, uh, Chris. Tell us more about that. Well, uh, we will be speaking to Nora Reed who is the creator of many a Twitter bot. And, uh, you and I can... love Twitter bots. Which, which ones? We, we do love Twitter bots here. You can see them on their website. If you go to uh, twitter.com slash Nora Reed and then click through to their website link, uh, it will take you to uh, where you can find a full list of their projects if you click on projects and it shows you all the miscellaneous Twitter bots such as Think Peace Bot, which generates those sort of Think oh, PC hot yeah, takes. Yeah, yeah. Um, they created uh, Like Uber, but terrible ideas for startups. Fantastic. And, like uh, Uber, but for, but a wombat. Yes. So uh, I'll just <laughs> give you a sample of it now. Uh, like Fox News, but for news. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually or, a good one. It usually just randomly comes out like, like the Salvation Army, but for microbrewers. So... <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> All stuff that I can legitimately see people doing in San Francisco. Yes. Uh, and various other uh, very entertaining bots. Uh, so we'll be speaking to them soon about 
these wonderful creations. Fantastic, right? And before that, I mean, it, it, I'm I'm still thinking about uh, I'm still thinking about the VCR. Um, <laughs> I am so sad. Yeah, it's the yeah. sad piano, isn't it? Um, but while I was thinking about the VCR, I was thinking about other songs for tonight. Uh, I mean, don't forget, you can still get your requests in. But I was really thinking about what to uh, what other songs to put in the show tonight. And I was thinking, when was VCR really at its peak for me in my life? And it was when I was a teenager, uh, and certainly kind of tweens to teens. And one of the things that was on TV a lot at that time, it kind of imported from the US, was Dawson's Creek. Did you ever watch Dawson's Creek? No. Uh, were, you, were you too cool for Dawson's Creek? I don't know. I, do, I guess. Or, <laughs> or too uncool for Dawson's Creek, I Possibly. think, in my perception. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but the, the theme from that was always kind of stuck with me as a real 90s treat. Yeah, I can see why. Does it make you feel 90s? Do you even know the song? I don't know the song. Yeah, I suppose it only makes sense if you know Dawson's Creek. Mm. It does. Uh, but if you listen to Dawson's Creek, listen to, watched, if you are, I've forgotten how video works. If you've watched uh-huh. Dawson's Creek, if you were a Dawson's Creek fan, let us know in the chat room. I'd love to speak to you because apparently nobody else has heard of this uh, this show. Well, I've heard of it. James Van Der Beek. Van Der Beek? Van Der Beek. Van Der Beek. Van Der Beek. I mean, I Buffy know. mentions it in Buffy. So. She does, yes. <laughs> and I love Buffy. Hmm. Um, oh, another good 90s show, but without really a very good theme tune to play. Um, I mean, it has a great theme tune, but it's not a song like this yeah. one. Yeah. No. So we'd just be listening to the Buffy theme blasting. tune. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, or we could, I suppose we could listen to anything off the musical episode of Buffy or just find just find Anthony Stewart Head talking and just play that for half an hour because, <laughs> to be honest with you, that's that's good stuff. Why not? A little bit in love with Anthony Stewart Head, not going to lie. Pop. But from vampires to robots. Yes, from the, and from from the nineties to to the future. To the future. <laughs> uh, we are now very very pleased to be able to welcome Nora Reed to the show. Hello, he says tentatively. And see, I'm pressing the, uh, the see. There's the button that says muted, and the, oh, uh, there we go. Hello, hello, hello. There we go. Hooray! Yay. Oh, good. Thanks for joining us, Nora. It's great to have you here. Welcome. Good to be here. So, am I echoing or anything? You sound, you sound perfect. Okay, good. Fantastic. A plane just started flying overhead extremely conveniently. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> they do tend to pick their times well with our interviews. Uh, but thank you for joining us, and uh, we are excited to talk to you about the bots you have created. We are. I'm I'm excited to answer questions or whatever. <laughs> I mean I I love bots. I'm a big fan of of anything. I mean the, the the phrase bot is kind of it means lots of different things. I mean you think robot in terms of you know actual physical thing, but but you know a bot is anything that that is automated really that that does things in an autonomous way. Uh and your bot Yeah, bots... I've had to say bot because i would accidentally disappoint people who thought i was building actual physical robots yeah i've said to people before check out my twitter bot and people have gone you have a robot that that no no it's not like i did have a nabaz tag once which was a wi-fi bunny that could read my tweets Uh, out so that was like a twitter robot Hmm. um i've always wanted like one of those but that actually works yeah, that's it the problem. It, it did not work. Like they worked great. It didn't work, and it was tied to a proprietary server. So when the company went bust, it became a useless chunk of plastic that occasionally lit up, and then went, "Oh, I've got no connection." So it just flashed red. It was a shame. <laughs> yeah, it's a bummer. I would. I think. Yeah, you know, I might just turn it into a lamp or a a, a thing to put chips in. I don't. I don't really know. I. I just <laughs> what have. What do dead, you do with a plastic rabbit? I have a dead Wi-Fi rabbit in my garage, and it's not decomposing. So, mm. how do you solve a problem like Nabaz Tag? Oh, I don't know, but that was a good one. Um, <laughs> but I, I fear we. I fear we're veering off topic, and Nora has, has kindly agreed to spend their time with us. So, yes. Um, so I guess my first question is, what got you interested in starting to create these these bots that do do such great things and amuse us so much i always liked um 
being able to do things that sounded like other things. I've always been pretty good with verisimilitude and satire and stuff like that. And I really liked the idea of making something that did that kind of thing automatically, because it kind of mm. proves a point when you can make something that sounds relatively close to like real terrible startup pitches or real terrible think piece titles or mm. whatever. And and so I'd always wanted to do that, but there wasn't really an accessible format that, that I was able to do until um, some of the more accessible Twitter bot stuff came out, because I'm not a coder. I, I'm really bad at programming. And so it wasn't until um, some, some Google Sheets things that plugged into the Twitter API and eventually Tracery came about, which is the, the tool that I use, um, Tracery and Cheatbots done quick, that I was able to actually do this stuff. And I realized when I started that I just had a huge trove of ideas that were in the back of my head for things that I always wanted to do but didn't have the coding knowledge to put together. Mm. And so I'm sort of just going through all of those now. Some of them are uh, really, really accurate as well. Um, I, I'm looking through the, the list that you tweeted of uh, all of the bots you've created. And the, there's one that's a parody of BuzzFeed titles called BuzzFeed, um, at BuzzFeed News, if you want to find it on Twitter. Um, and it says, uh, 18 ways to make blood teller brand hazelnut flavored blood spread with sidekicks. <laughs> Wow. And that yeah. sounds that sounds exactly like the kind of thing that you would see on BuzzFeed. So they are very, very pertinent a lot of the time. Things that have um, particularly formulaic titles, especially headlines, are really a good starting point to riff on. Hmm. I'm just looking at your, your, your bot for Automatic Spice. <laughs> the, uh, oh yeah the that one was really the... fun there's some some word lists going around that i've been able to use i've been using the moby word list which is a a giant open source list um and and there's some folks who have divided it up by part of speech so that i could just get a huge list of every adjective in english and have it generate terrible spice girls I'm, and so it was really cool because it's it's all stuff that that other people put out there and i just had to figure out ways to connect it that were funny hmm. i think sometimes that just the the things that come out of it are, are so beautiful like non-unique spice <laughs> i quite like that yeah. one actually non-unique spice <laughs> yes <laughs> well, the very nature of it is you're trying to differentiate all the spice <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so you were joke. you were talking a bit about uh, kind of tracery and cheat bots done quick, and I, could you tell us a bit more about that? I mean, it, that's made it so much easier to start making bots. But if if one of our listeners has an idea for for random words they could mash together, how would they do that? Well, what what those do? Um, a lot of people think that I'm doing something that's like reading headlines or something like that, and there are a lot of bots that are set up like that. Mine is not one of them. None of mine are are like that. All they are are they're like Mad Libs. There's you create a bunch of formulas that have basically blank spaces in them, and then you come up with lists of of words that can slot into the blank spaces, and and so I'll have um, like the BuzzFeed formulas are are things that are, I, I read a bunch of BuzzFeed headlines and sort of got the gist of them and then made, I think that that one has probably like 50 or so formulas wow. that are just like blank number of tips for, or, or like blank and then for the number and then it slots in like tips or hints or hacks mm. and then various materials and then various projects. And, and once you come up with enough things on those lists, it can create a fairly decent amount of variation and, and um, you can set it to automatically tweet 
every hour or every three hours or mm. or whatever. But the the trick is just having enough variety in there that it's coming up with interesting things whenever um, whenever that that timer goes off. Mm. So it has to be fairly varied for it to be going off very often um, or else I, I basically start turning it down. Once I start getting bored with it, I'll mm. turn it back from one hour to three hours or six hours. Yeah. Yeah, I've, um, there is one bot that I'm aware of that does take real headlines. It's uh, a bot called CNN Your Mum. And it, it reads mm -hmm. headlines from CNN.com and uh, just takes out nouns and puts your mum in place. So wow, that sounds cool. 35 different ways to save money on your mum. Wow. Or uh, Joe Biden will appear on your mum next season. And stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, There's, that I really awesome. like Headline Smasher, which um, grabs two headlines and, and puts them together. And there's a good one that that relate that that replaces all instances of millennial with snake people. Mm. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. I um, we millennials are yes. I we snake people are in fact. I've uh, I've seen you can get an extension for uh, your browser that does that on every page you visit, and it'll also replace like yeah. the millennial generation with the serpentine population. Yeah, I don't know which one of them came first, but it's the same general idea. There's also one that replaces every instance of cyber with spider, nice. which is pretty fun. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. The... You'll, you'll find a lot of good stuff like that from just people doing tracery stuff like me and people who are doing um, stuff that that actually plugs into live content. If you mm. look on the bot ally hashtag, that's where um, a lot of folks who are interested in bot stuff and also frequently concerned about issues of, of bot ethics and social justice and stuff like that, a lot of us hang out on there. And so you get mm. to see some back end stuff on how we talk about the bots that we're working on and stuff too. But that's also just a fun way to find out about new ones. Mm. Uh, an observation from Scatterboon in our chat room is that the problem with bots that use real headlines is that they don't know when it's inappropriate, which yes. is very true. Mm. Yeah. And even ones that don't use real headlines, it still can be problematic. There's definitely times when I've not thought of a way that think peace bot could put something together and it came up with something sort of horrible mm. and I've had to take out keywords for that reason because you sort of have to imagine all of the different ways that things would get shoved together yeah and make sure that it's not coming up with something like and and so i end up with like a, a thing where if there's any sexual content in a bot there can't also be anything that mentions children because you don't want those to be connected together yeah yeah and so there's uh, some interesting ethical issues with that but but people frequently send me stuff and are like can you put this in there and just because of the way that that bots end up connecting things and also i've just taken down the headline ones temporarily when there's bad stuff happening in the world because i don't want people getting when their ears are already pricked for bad news i don't want to accidentally break some news that didn't make them think that it's even worse yeah yeah, and I mean, it, it's, you know, the the smashing words together that are inappropriate is one thing, but at least, you know, timing-wise, that just kind of happens. Whereas, uh, obviously, a headline-grabbing bot could, you know, take uh, something that is unfolding or developing in the world, uh, you know, at that moment in time mm -hmm. and really, uh, really not do good things for it, for mm -hmm. people. So, uh, so yeah, there are there are dangers. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Scattermood, of course, there in the chat room, reminding us that it's not all fun and games and that yes. we should remember that the world is also doom and gloom. The other interesting... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other interesting bot thing um, to think about, and in a sense, we've run into this um, with a bot, uh, and we'll talk about that a bit later, is that making it obvious that the bot is a bot is often quite important as well. Yeah, sometimes it's fun to not do it. True. Uh, yes, and, and in, bots that are that are like troll honey pots that yes that's very funny. mention keywords that um 
chat with people and waste their time so they don't waste my time. Hmm. And that's kind of true, but you had an instance with uh, a bot version of you, and we'll talk about mm-hmm. our bots in a bit, but your bot, Catherine, <laughs> yeah. your bot, Catherine, ran into Amazon support. Yes, yes. Um, Amazon Help uh, in the UK responded to the bot version yeah. of me. It tweeted something about Amazon Prime, didn't it? Because it they, mashes your tweets together. And they had this whole confusing conversation, and I kind of had to step in and explain to Amazon Help that, oh, sorry, that that's a robot. But it went it, on for quite some time. It did. Yeah. They exchanged several tweets. <laughs> is it a, like a Markov one, like an e yeah. one? It is, yeah. yeah. Those ones can sort of accidentally sound surprisingly human and plausible if you don't they have can. the context, they which is really always can. kind of interesting. Yeah, my Markov bot at one stage was coming up with stuff that was very, very like me. And then, you know, I did an update and it just went from being very like me to nothing like me. So, uh, yeah. But very interesting all the same. But there are there are so many different kinds of bots. I mean, you mentioned these ebooks bots, uh, the Markov chain generator, which is uh, a very different algorithm and a very different kind of bot to the uh, to the ones that are a bit more formulaic, where you're adding a couple of words together. But I mean, really, the the aim of these bots seems to be very much, from my point of view, to to really entertain and inform. Uh, what what's the motivation for uh, and it's something very dramatic here? What's your motivation? <laughs> what is the motivation behind the the, the bots that you've you've made? Uh, are any of them for anything other than than a bit of fun? Um, a few of them are are like deliberate satire. I mean, Think Peace Bot is the main one of these, but I have and um, Botist Takes, which is sort of the feminist social justice version of that that mm. bot, and. Those are are sort of deliberately meant to make fun of the the way that people write, especially about millennials. Mm. But I do have a lot of other ones that are um, sort of health helper bots um, and mental health helper bots. I have one that just posts to remind you to take your medications every hour. Um, and I know a lot of people who have. I've, I've gotten a lot of messages from people who are like, oh, I was about to forget, but I followed your medication bot and hmm. it reminded me. And I have ones that just remind you to drink water. The hydrate bot is one of my really popular ones. And I released the code for that one. So people have made forks of that that remind them to do other things. Yeah. There's a really um, nice, really nice one that I followed like that. a couple of days ago that was uh like a friend, or like a yay friend bot, and it um, it just tells you that you know you're you're valued and you're cared about as a person, that you're worth something, and and it will occasionally no one responds just, to yeah you. yeah it it tweets things at me, and if I like a tweet or something, it it replies to me. It's lovely. It's it's nice to have a little interaction. It's really, yeah, it's, it's so cute. I it's love very that sweet. One. That's not one of mine. It's just it's it's one of the ones that's inspiration for a lot of the mental health ones that i've done too yeah it is a it's a very lovely bot so i discovered that the other day and followed it and it, it is it is nice it sounds uh yeah it it's it's nice it actually sounds like a few of my friends which is mm. is interesting so <laughs> uh, it's like having them there even when they're asleep um thinking yes. of no certain australians yeah. that are normally asleep for half of the day that we have here mm. yeah yeah, I think a lot of good can be done with bots as well. Um, that sort of that sort of thing of kind of reminding people to do stuff or or giving people kind of positive reinforcement is definitely a very very nice side effect of being able to create robots that mash words together and tweet every so often. Do you know what it reminds me of I a think- bit though? What does it remind you of? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember, I mean, you you won't, Chris, but there was a, back in the early days of, of computers, before I had the internet, there was this great program called Eliza, um, and it came on a floppy disk, and it was like, a, it was designed to be a fake psychotherapist in a, in a program. But you could, the idea was you could talk I've to it, and it that. would just Thank ask you, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it could just ask you about your day and, and things like that, and... and it would just prompt you to have a conversation. So mm. it wasn't doing much, and it certainly wasn't very qualified, but yeah. it was the, one of the very first things that you could type into a computer, and it would look at the words that you were typing in and give you uh, what it thought was an appropriate response. So It would, just it would restate what you said back to you sometimes. Yes, which, which was, was really very cool. powerful. I, I definitely t- did a lot of fooling around with that at a really impressionable age, and it really left an impression. Yeah, I was mm. quite young when I first used that on an old computer that we had at home. But it, it 
it did have a profound effect and it, and it really influenced my thoughts about the way that computers interact with people. And I think it feeds really nicely into this, this world of bots that we live in. Yeah. The other thing that I think of as sort of the spiritual ancestor um, is, is the um, various Dungeons and Dragons tables. And mm -hmm. I think that was the other thing that was a big influence on me. Yeah, I think, you know, that as far as inspiration for these things goes, there's there are so many different things that a lot of people that maybe grew up at the at the start of the Internet or just before the Internet age really began in earnest when it wasn't available to just kind of everyone all the time everywhere. Um, there are so many of those things like Eliza, like Dungeons and Dragons tables, like, you know, uh, uh, things that you don't see as much of anymore or things that have changed shape entirely since the world of the internet came along. I think it's really nice to see a lot more kind of human centered things mm. being created online, especially the, the kind of the, the helper bots that remind you to drink water and take your medication and, and breathe. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose it'd be a bit much if there was a bot that every three seconds it said breathe in and then every three seconds it said breathe out. I think Twitter would ban that in about three seconds for looking <laughs> yeah. like spam. Far too many uh, requests in one go. Hmm. So what next? I mean, are, are there any any bots that you're kind of currently mulling over or is there anything that's maybe a bit more complicated that you've not quite worked out how to do yet? I, I've been, um, it's only recent that they've added, um, that the, the um, creator of Cheap Bots Done Quick has added the ability to respond and mm. um, to have bots that talk back. And I played with that a little bit. I, I have a couple that, um, that I send um, trolls to so that they talk to the bot instead of to me. And that's been a fun way of using that. But I I also made ones that do like um, one that that generates really silly deaths, and so it'll generate silly deaths for you if you at message it. That's just like it it um it comes up with just. I hope that's you're, you're text killed not with an ridiculous actual... weaponry and stuff. Hmm. Yeah, that's text. I that hope one's not called "You weapons. Have Died" um, with underscores between the words. Oh, nice! Like uh, throwback to the uh, to the kind of text-based adventures. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's definitely inspired by those, and um, there's a lot of sort of um, ridiculous weaponry, like guns that shoot puppies and stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, shoot puppies out of the guns, not murder puppies i want a gun um, that will shoot puppies out of it because then i could just pull a trigger and i get a puppy as yeah as it, um, out gently. it would probably eventually be sort of difficult to take care of all the puppies but it's uh challenge sort of accepted really fun one <laughs> so i've but, just yeah it's the future for me is definitely looking at at how to make ones that interact with people more mm -hmm. and um figure out what what stuff what what it changes when there's sort of the appearance of an interpersonal interaction even when it's random number generated so i i've just found uh you have died um on twitter and it is <laughs> there there are a lot of uh people tweeting at it and it's responding to with things like you dropped dead after a dragon put a spell on you oh. and things like that um yeah. and it looks like it's i generating. want to add to that one there's a lot of ridiculous ways to die and so there's a lot of ways to expand that and make it sillier mm. there are a lot of ridiculous ways to die i mean i <laughs> i can think of like 23 just in the studio mm. yes yes <laughs> we've still got a bucket you of want green. to send them <laughs> throw them in we've still got a bucket of green ping pong balls left over from uh, the end of our last series so uh yes. anything involving a bucket of green ping pong balls is, drowning is in a sea of, of green ping pong balls yeah yes i have sort of a long like list of inventory items that that could definitely go in brilliant <laughs> fantastic they are they are plentiful and they are green <laughs> 
up until a few months ago, I mean, some of the soundproofing would just fall off the wall yeah. during a show. That's true, but you, <laughs> it's very hard to get to get killed by a, a feather light stone tile, a uh, foam tile, rather. If it was stone, <laughs> stone it probably tile, would do yes. damage. <laughs> oh, dear. It would require creative usage. Yeah, you'd have to be very, very determined to kill someone with foam. I'd have to get foam in my eye and then maybe trip over and land in a bucket of ping pong balls and then fall down the stairs. Yeah, there'd be a sequence of events mm. going on. Yeah. But so. <laughs> One of the things that I really like about um, the like weird object death thing is because it, it sort of forces the user to come up with a, a story. Mm. Like, just like you guys just did. And so coming up with ways to inspire that either just in people's imagination when they read the tweet or responding to the tweet and quote tweeting it and sharing it with their friends with their ideas of how this could happen is a really like fun usage of bots as a sort of impromptu social creative writing prompt it's yeah. almost like you know you, you get these card games sometimes that have you know scenarios on and then you have to explain them to people it's a bit like that but in a twitter bot i really like that i should mm. actually we should actually think about maybe we should use them in the show in fact after the next song let's bring up a couple and see if we can ad lib stories i think that's yeah. a really cool <laughs> that's a really cool thing I to mean, do mm. You guys talked about Magic Realism Bot, I think, last week. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we did. And that's one of the ones that a lot of them are self-contained, but a lot of them seem to, like, mm. beg to have a story written for them. Yeah. Which is, that one's a big inspiration for me. I really like that one. Yeah. We might have to give that a go after the after the next uh, song. I think that would be quite a, quite a cool challenge. Another one of my favorites cool. is um, at Micro SFF, which is um, science fantasy, science fiction and fantasy stories that fit within a tweet. And it's another one. Um, but I don't think that one is a bot. Uh, but it's it's stories that fit within 140 characters. And, uh, there are some really good ones that are, and I know there's some that are hybrid where there's, there's um, I don't know the name of it off the top of my head, but there's one where the it generates little sci-fi stories, and then sometimes the creator will reply to them and extend the story hmm. past the bot. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I, I love when, when bots tell stories because some of them because it's so random some of them are completely implausible and, and ridiculous but some of them do sound really interesting so i'm looking forward to it yeah so what's the future what's the future of bots do you think uh do you think that this will grow do you think this will become a, a bigger thing Could, can you see a twitter bot maybe not just being a twitter bot but also a bot across all platforms will your twitter bots be texting me anytime soon I mean, they, they kind of already can. The, the way that you can set up alerts on your phone, I know a lot of people do that for the mental health reminder ones. And I definitely have some of them bridging into Tumblr also. I just have them auto-posting the same content. And hmm. so some of them are a lot more popular on Tumblr because, like I said, with um, the ones that people add stories to, people really like expanding the stories and it's easier to share something longer form in that format. And so people really have a lot of fun doing that. Um, but I don't know about like the future for bots in general, especially beyond Twitter, because there's just been an explosion recently of people who are not making money off of them they're not doing anything commercial with them um some of them might have tip jars um in the way that i do but they're not doing them for companies or anything like that and and then you have these big things like microsoft tay and and mm. um commercial well, that bots well. that are coming from a totally different angle and almost always have no idea how twitter actually works yeah and so are unleashed on twitter and immediately the results are completely horrible and so, like, there's this weird juxtaposition of people like me who are coming from the Twitter angle and being like, how can we insert automation into this space that we already exist in and do something interesting there versus people who are know how to do the automation and know how to do the conversational aspects and are like, how do we plug this into Twitter? Mm angle the results 
tend to, in my opinion, not be as good because every platform has a different way of working socially or a different kind of etiquette. And, and so if you have a Twitter bot directly translated to some other platform, it will still be acting like a Twitter bot and not whatever else it's supposed to be on. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we look forward to seeing what comes next and yeah. seeing uh, seeing uh, the more more bots from you. Yeah, just before we let you go, um, I tweeted at you have died uh, from the Geekly Chronicles asking how we died, and it says we kicked the bucket in a distressing biomechanics incident. Well, I think we'll have to have a think about the story behind that one. Yes, sounds legit. Well, respectable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> It could have been worse. Based on the amount of, of technology around us right now, that could well be the case. Yes. The studio may come alive and consume the three of us. Yes. Thank you very much for joining us, Nora. It has been fantastic sure, to speak to you. Thanks for having me. It was great talking. Uh, and I believe you have a request for us. Oh, yeah. I, I was going to ask you to play my favorite um, Radical Face song. Well, uh, we've got it queued up here for you, so uh, we'll let you introduce it. Okay, this is, oh my God, which one did I give you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gave you the ship in port, yes. yes. You did. Because it, it's one of the ones that really appeals to me as an artist for talking about taking risks. Well, Nora, thank learning. you. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. And here is your song. You're listening to the Geekly Chronicles. When this baby hits 88 decibels per hour, you're going to hear some serious stuff. And now, the shipping forecast issued by the Geekly Chronicles on behalf of fanfiction.net at 1900. The general synopsis this evening. Carol, Grimolsh, Rishon, rain coming, galoshes recommended. Double up if necessary. Casket, variable, becoming canonical. Klexa, nuclear apocalypse warning issued at 100. Destiel, seasons 12, long running, good. Dromione, Snilly, Starbucks, Hogwarts Express moving northerly. Magical proficiency, moderate or good, occasionally poor. Everlark, districts 13, odds ever in favour. Hanagram slash headcanon turning cannibalistic later. John Locke, Sheriati, Sherlolly, Mind Palace, moderate or good. Bodies, ready. Larry Stylinson, one thing, dragged down. Perfect later. Rumbell, Captain Swan, fairy tale endings expected. Sasu Saku, Manga Feels, Ninjas Possible. Brutasha, Pepperoni, Stucky, Thorky, stay in your seats until the end of the credits. Twissy, Hufaldi, Hoofle, OTPs, Wibbly Wobbly, Timey Wimey. Stidia, Malio, Laden, reclining back, on the ground, in a horizontal position. And that ends the shipping forecast. It's the Geekly Chronicles. It's like being on the Generation game. Only every prize is a cuddly toy. It is. We love cuddly toys. Aww. We do. So. Idea. Cuddly box. It's the Tumble Fumble. More random happenings from across Are the internet. Are you ready for a scroll it's in the It's the Tumble hay? Fumble. Ah! Press all the buttons. All that the was not meant to happen. Let's try that again. Are you ready for a scroll in the hay? Yes. Let's go. <laughs> So, it's, well, it's bots, obviously. <laughs> Box? B-O-X? No, B-O-T-S. Oh, B-O-T- oh yeah, because of what Nora was saying. Yeah, yeah. so it's yeah. a They did fumble. give a great interview. They did. They did. And I like bots. Mm-hmm. So I like it's... big bots and I cannot lie. Yes, you other Twitter users can't deny. Mm-hmm. So, it's a bot special on the Tumble Fumble. Uh, we've already talked about bots before, obviously. Last last time we talked about Magic Realism Bot and uh, we've talked about Clickbait Robot quite a lot. That's one of my personal yes. favourites. It also includes yes. images uh, in the tweets. Clickbait Robot is particularly special. Yeah, it's mm. got a very special place in my heart as, as yeah. Clickbait Robot. Uh, but then I realised there's actually lots of other bots that I've been following for forever. 
Um, you know, I think one of the first accounts I ever followed on Twitter was Big Ben Clock. Ah, uh, yes. This is a favourite of mine as well. Yeah, um, and really it sort of does exactly what it says on the tin, really. Um, obviously, Big Ben is a is a bell, isn't it? <laughs> Big Ben is the bell, bell inside, inside the Westminster inside Clock Tower. Inside a, yeah. a tower, um, but generally most people call the tower Big Ben. It's got a big clock on it, um, if you're not familiar with London. And <laughs> <laughs> and so essentially every hour it, it bongs, and so does the Twitter bot. Yeah. So it's it it's a nice way of letting me know that I've spent too much time staring at Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> when you see when you see three bongs, and you think, yeah. oh my goodness, it's three o'clock. What's, what's happened? <laughs> what's yeah. happened? In fact, I started looking at this three days ago. What? Yeah. <laughs> in fact, um, in that vein, one of Nora's bots is at wrong Ben. It's nice. inaccurate Big Ben, and it just bongs randomly, random times during the day, and sometimes it tweets bongo. Nice. So, <laughs> So I love it. if if you like Big Ben Clock but want your your timekeeping to take on a slightly more random element, <laughs> follow Wrong Ben. <laughs> nice, love it. I like it. Oh, thank you, Chris. Um, uh, so other other bots I, I I know and follow. Uh, every word is gay, of course. I do like that bot. Yeah, there are a lot of those. Every word is blank. Most of which we can't say on air. No, to be fair. But every word is gay. Did tweet the other day. Gay lesbians. Nice. Which I thought was yeah. was interesting. Lovely. Indeed. But it just every dictionary word. Yeah. So it's gay something. Yes. Yeah. Gay ball. <laughs> gay chicken. Gay aardvark. Gay Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The most recent one is gay licenser. Well, yeah. Because uh, so it's, we're, we're it's so in the LI part of the dictionary because it's uh, had licensing, licenses. That is that who you go to to get your gay card? It must be I the suppose. one that the one that everyone at school seemed to think that I kept dropping all the time. I know. I mean, you not heard that one? People no. like as an insult. People go up to you and go, "Oh, you dropped your gay card." And if you looked on the floor, they'd go, "Oh, you've got a gay card." It's kids were mean when I grew up. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it was either going to be that or the theme from Dawson's Creek, wasn't it? Or... The, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I the forgot saddest that episode one. of Geekly we've ever had. <laughs> it is. Uh, and my next bot is one that I've only just discovered called uh, Eight Ball or Eight Ball underscore is the Twitter name, and it's a magic eight ball nice. uh, bot. So you you tweet it a question, and it will. Well, I might have to, have to you... give this a go. I would, yeah. Right. So if anyone wants to give that a go and and let us know what it what it thinks, <laughs> then yeah. go for it. Um, yeah. So what what's Kez going to ask the, uh, the uh, magic I've, gate ball? I've got to log into Twitter first. Oh. So to keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> keep talking. Um, I've got it. I might uh, I might ask it what it what it uh, thinks if it thinks series five is going to be good as good as series four. Series five of of, of the Geekly Chronicles. Yes. Okay. Or, or maybe we should say because it kind of has to be a yes no answer. Should we do a series five ah. of the Geekly Chronicles? I'm, it I'm... hangs in the balance, people. <laughs> wow. I have tweeted at 8ball underscore, should we come back for Series 5? So we'll mm. see what it says. Momentarily. Wow. Indeed. I'm, it's it's quite tense. Yeah, I'm kind of crossing my fingers that this is this is a positive. I'm crossing my toes, too. <laughs> yes. So we did literally just waiting for yeah, it to reply. Our, our yeah. fate. Amazing. You, you would think that it would reply a little faster. You'd think it was a bot. What other bots have you got for us? So, uh, next up, we have our own bots. Yeah. Oh, so we do have our own bots. We do. Well, uh, Kez and I have bots made around the, the tweets that our Twitter accounts tweet. That we yes. tweet ourselves. Our Twitter accounts don't just <laughs> come up with that stuff on their own. Okay. <laughs> I guess. Do you want to maybe start this sentence again? <laughs> no, I'll just wait for it to come back around. <laughs> so our bots are uh, are taken from our own Twitter accounts. Yeah. They are uh, run through Markov chain generators. So what we do is we take our Twitter accounts and we uh, then import all of the stuff using a, a cool little uh, Twitter ebooks bot library that was written by uh, someone called Miss B. And we let it download all our tweets and it jumbles up all the words, picks out key phrases, and then, uh, at a random interval, it constructs 140 characters of whatever from what it thinks we would talk about. Mm. And they come up with some very interesting things, don't they? 
They do indeed. You got yeah. some examples. Uh, so, uh, so my uh, my robot account, my robot account is called Robo Nails because I'm usually Nail Gun Princess on, yes. on Twitter. Uh, so, uh, Nail Gun Robot. Uh, is is currently in the office with work to do by the looks of things. Uh, four hours ago, it was saying, "I feel like they've been microwaved." Who? What has been microwaved? Uh, I knows? don't know if we uh, if we want to pursue that line of questioning. <laughs> Does anybody know which book comes first if they notice it? <laughs> I like. Wouldn't want to eat my jumper. <laughs> <laughs> Who would? That's that's a good although, point. Although I have spilled quite a bit of food on this jumper. So. Yes. Twenty twenty two hours ago, your robot said, "Gave up on the radio." I'm hoping that's not the case since we're on yeah. the radio. Yes. Well, luckily, that's just just my robot that's going yeah. up on yeah. it, not, not actually. And uh, as we were saying earlier, your bot had an interaction with Amazon Help that I've just dug up because <laughs> oh, it no. said, "Maybe I'm just not looking for comments like that, or should I get it on Amazon Instant Video?" And had always wanted to watch it, and so Amazon Help chimed in, having searched for that phrase, and said, "Is there something we can help you find?" And Nail Gun Robot, in possibly <laughs> the most appropriate response it could have come up with, said. I ordered Local Hero on DVD next week. Question mark. <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> and Amazon Help were like, I, I'm not sure. I can't see your account. Trying to help without realizing that this was a machine. So, uh, wow. So you intervened in the end. <laughs> but, uh, just huh. another one from your robot. I did it in the voice of a Vulcan computer. <laughs> just <laughs> nice. randomly. Uh, and we will always wonder what it was. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, my uh, my Twitter bot is uh, Kezguy, which is my Twitter account underscore ebooks, um, and it has some some random stuff in there. Shameful admission: I'm British yet oddly catchy. <laughs> yes, I like that one. Ah. <laughs> uh. Hey, I just crowned 50 hours of Game of Thrones. Was a story about six chairs and the epic struggle to finish a game of Monopoly. <laughs> I mean, Another I haven't one. watched a lot of Game of Thrones. Is that that's basically the plot? I think right? so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another one says, just says, "I'll get on board with it." And another right. one, very succinctly, today is a day to forget. <laughs> I got a million views. And for... thank you, very dead is another one. <laughs> nice. And now for something completely different. Or th- <laughs> I think I understand what Bay is. <laughs> I think I'm going to do some lawn. Okay, maybe not then. <laughs> nice so yeah they uh they do tend to come out with some quite interesting things some of it is just horrendously nonsensical but Play a little are... bit weird instead <laughs> i think my the, my favorite tweet that, that, that my bot has done was uh even people you once thought were cool can end up having to clean the robot yeah i want that on a t-shirt one, one of nice my one. favorite recent ones from mine is planning on making a fantasy star cake for the victims of the bbc debate on the european referendum tonight yes <laughs> the victims mm. of the debate of the referendum yeah that was inflicted on us all mm-hmm. but it, it sounds surprisingly human like this one from june the 29th it says spent all day yesterday playing tabletop games and eat food with my friends other than the mm. bad grammar that actually sounds like a legitimate thing yeah another one Take me back to my wow days. <laughs> and yeah. help, I need a red feathered hat. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't have... Ooh, but for dude bros. <laughs> I don't have one of these Twitter bots, but I have created some bots of my own. Yes, and uh, yeah, I'm rather rather in love with one of them. <laughs> yes. Um, I, can, I can see them on your tumble fumble list, but mm-hmm. um, I'll start with... Possibly the one you're not quite as in love with. Mm-hmm. But um, do you remember the adverts for the club chocolate bar? If you like a lot of chocolate on your biscuit, join, join our, our club. club. Well, <laughs> I, I discovered... If you do remember, you'll be singing that now. Yes. I discovered um, Cheap Bots Done Quick that Nora was talking about earlier. And it was really easy to put in, if you like a lot of blank on your blank, and put in... A list of about 200 foodstuffs. So at underscore join our club will tweet two random foodstuffs every every hour or so. So uh, what was the one that it had earlier? 
Oh, I did. <laughs> I did favourite some to be prepared, but I'm I mean, horrendously unprepared. For some people that don't necessarily get the reference, there was a video for Club Biscuit Bars in the Ooh. UK, an advert that was, "If you like a lot of chocolate on your biscuit, join our club." Yes, and the, the you know the biscuit bar was yeah. called Club, and it was a chocolatey biscuit. Hmm. If you like that a lot of preference. pepperoni on your profiterole, join our club. Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> If you like a lot of artichoke on your cinnamon roll. If you like a lot of artichoke on your cinnamon roll, join our <laughs> club. you got to sing it. <laughs> you do. you got to sing it. So my favourite from 18 hours ago. Uh, if you like a lot of chutney on your muffin, join, join our, our club. club. If you like a lot of chutney on, on your, your muffin, muffin join, join our, our club. club. I like it. Yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and then on to possibly Catherine's favourite. Yeah. Uh, it's Dr. Leonard McCoy from Star Trek in robot form. At then, Robo McCoy. He is a bit predictable, though, because quite often he would say, Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a... Whatever. Blank. Yes. <laughs> but uh, most recently, 30 minutes ago, he said, I'm a doctor, not a tank car loader. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. So we took every time, because obviously this was his catchphrase in Star Trek, I'm a doctor, not a blank. Something, yeah. Yeah. So he would say this in various different ways like, uh, throughout Jim. The, the series and, yeah. and the films and me i'm an old country doctor yes yeah if i was a blank <laughs> yeah. yeah so we just took all those uh phrases and inserted a list of professions and yes some of them just come out well quite beautiful really i'm a doctor not a private detective <laughs> <laughs> there's um one that i saw kind of I think it was on day one of me having created the bot was something like, I'm a doctor, not an emer uh, emergency medical technician. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, sort of kind are. of are. <laughs> I'm still looking through some older tweets from my bot. Hi, everyone. I just opened Emacs six years ago and I just worked out how to quit it. Woohoo. <laughs> I've that's had that actually, to me. It's actually quite relevant. Yeah. Uh, also, just cats meow at Waterloo Underground. Oh, <laughs> oh that's quite sweet, really. Nice. I'm not a door-to-door -door sales worker or a retail buyer, Mr. Spock. <laughs> it's, had some, it's had some nice ones. I think one of my favourite ones was another early one of, uh, of Leonard McCoy's, which is, uh, I'm a doctor, not a tobacco roasting machine operator. <laughs> yes, that yeah. was very nice. It's imagining the scenario in which, yeah. you know, Spock and Kirk have said something to him and he feels the need to respond <laughs> with this. Yeah. It is the story in the bot. Uh, that, that Again, it, 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 it writes a, a story in your mind, mm -hmm. and I think that's where the where the beauty is. Yeah. Well, uh, we've had a, a a very good uh, good delve into the world of bots there. Yes, mm. thank you for uh, that fumble. So please do follow along with those bots. They were again. Oh. Do I have to remember what they were? Yeah, they is were. This... Come on. <laughs> uh, they, uh, our bots, certainly. Our bots. Yeah. So uh, I, my bot is at Robonails, and uh, Kez's bot is at Kezguy underscore, underscore ebooks. ebooks. Uh, and then you can also, the, the Club Biscuit uh, bot is underscore join our club. And, uh, and Leonard McCoy can be found at Robo, Robo McCoy. McCoy. Yep. Well, we have had a great show. We have. But there's one thing we need to do. We do. We need to check in with the final results of Would You Fund It? And now remember that if you win this time, you've won the series of Would You Fund I It? Have. And if you don't win this time, we have to do some maths to work it out. Yes. <gasps> But whoever the winner is gets to do next week's Would You Fund It, which yes. is kind or of a prize, I think. Two weeks from now. <laughs> uh, yes. But uh, the vote has closed and the the votes have been counted and verified and it's funded. Oh, 67% of our audience tonight have funded at, or have voted to fund at home with the Camerons. This week's winner is... Since we never normally get to use that button. Thanks. <laughs> wow. So, Chris, you've won. Uh, congratulations. I you have, have won apparently. the series of Would You Fund It? So it seems. And so the next episode is the last one of the series. It ah. is. I know. I know. So that will be scary. Tuesday. But we, don't worry. Series 5 will be back. We it are will. doing Series 5. That will return to you in September. Yes. But before that, we've got another special that we've been promising we'd do for a while as well. Mm -hmm. A little sneaky extra episode yep. yeah. on the end. The week after our final episode, so we're not going to do that usual thing where we leave a gap. We're just yeah. going to go one week. Yeah, 19th uh, of August. The 19th of August, you will get a special After Dark episode. 
And when we say After Dark, we mean this show is family friendly. That show will not be. Very mm-hmm. much not. Very much not be. All of the swearing we don't normally do, we will cram into an hour. <laughs> yes. Right in the end there. Yeah. So, that'd be so cool. we will have some of our radio. usual features, just a little bit swearier. A yeah. little bit swearier. Mm. Yes. Um, so we and look so, forward to that. Yes. But uh, with that. Yeah, with that, we've had a great show this week. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. And from me, Kez. <laughs> And from me, Chris. And from me, a very sad Catherine. And from the VCR. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. You've been listening to the Geekly Chronicles. Content was researched and vaguely fudged together by Chris, Catherine, and Kez, who are also your hosts for this evening's show. The Geekly Chronicles is an independent production. Any reference to any persons or things, living or dead, was probably an error. What is the reality anyway? Don't take the blue pill. Live long and prosper. Wear sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs>